There has been a significant recent trend towards offering ketamine therapy for a multitude of medical and mental health diagnoses. Ketamine is being used in everything from depression, PTSD, postpartum and peripartum depression, anxiety, substance use disorders, eating disorders, chronic pain, and mood disorders, just to name a few. The interest has been associated with widespread openings of clinics in the United States and worldwide that offer ketamine therapy. The problem is, it's not always safe because there is variability in the guidelines as well as the oversight on a state-by-state -state basis. So patients may experience a vastly different standard of care between individual treatment sites. There's a growing body of evidence that ketamine can help in some of the disorders that I mentioned. But how safe is it? And what is the FDA telling us about compounded versions of ketamine? Now, depression treatment. Alan Kelly says ketamine gave him his life back. The drug is called esketamine. It's a chemical cousin to an illegal club drug called Special K or ketamine. FDA has issued a warning to the public urging them to steer clear of compounded ketamine. Ketamine was first synthesized in 1962 from PCP, and it was first tested on animals and had great positive results. Unfortunately, the drug was then tested out on human prisoners, and it was found that it acted faster and had less side effects, which made it a preferable anesthetic over PCP. After these promising trials, the FDA approved ketamine for medical use in 1970. It was first used on American soldiers during the Vietnam War during battlefield surgery. It is a highly effective anesthetic, but it soon began to be abused along the West Coast in the early 1970s. In the 70s, there was a ton of psychiatric and academic research on the favorable effects of of ketamine. But during the 1980s, it started to be used as a party drug. New forms were popping up in the street drug market, putting ketamine in capsules, powders, tablets, solutions, and injectable forms. This is where the first instances of the compounding of ketamine into various preparations comes into play, which we will see in a moment is still important today. In the mid 80s, subcultures began to adopt the use of ketamine more frequently. It was used as a way to come down after a rave or a long night out. A lot of people called it the ecstasy of the time. In the 90s, ketamine's illicit use began to dominate the conversation around it. While it was still medically used as an anesthetic, it was now widely known in the streets as Special K. This is where the illicit abuse of ketamine really took hold. And in 1999, the United States finally classified ketamine as a controlled substance in order to stop its illicit use. In the 2000s, medical professionals started to notice and study ketamine's ability to rapidly alleviate depression and suicidal thoughts. And between 2000 and 2006, it was ultimately shown that ketamine can be a viable alternative for people with treatment resistant depression. That's because Ketamine is a receptor antagonist. It blocks the NMDA receptor. And the NMDA receptor has a significant role in the manifestations of depression. Ketamine, through its blockade on this NMDA receptor, works rapidly to control the symptoms of depression and suicidal ideation. It it may increase glutamate in the brain as well as cause the brain to get bathed
bathed in a very important hormone called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which can literally help your brain to remodel itself, which is thought to be one of the reasons that ketamine can have such a rapid impact on so many psychiatric diseases. On October 11th of 2023, the Food and Drug Administration issued a warning about the potential hazards associated with compounded versions of ketamine that are used in the treatment of psychiatric disorders. We know that there has been an explosion in the number of wellness clinics using ketamine. And sometimes instead of getting pharmaceutical grade ketamine, they go through a third party intermediary to compound the ketamine into a different preparation. There have been reports of adverse incidents linked to the unsupervised use of compounded ketamine, and the FDA has raised concerns about the heightened risk of this dangerous psychiatric reactions when it is not used appropriately. Patients are going home with ketamine in their own possession and not being monitored during the time that they are under the influence of the drug. This can lead to problems like increased blood pressure, respiratory depression, urinary tract problems that can lead to incontinence. That's because ketamine produces a very unique state known as a dissociative state. This is different than what you would get from say a benzodiazepine where you still feel like you are in your own self even though the medication is still working on the pathways of anxiety. We know that ketamine can create this sensation where you're not able to coordinate muscle movements, where you may feel like you're outside of yourself, or you simply may have reactions that cause you to panic along the way. The FDA aims to differentiate between the supervised use of ketamine therapy within clinics and wellness centers and the online marketing of the drug via telemedicine for at-home use. The concern is that when patients get compounded ketamine products from telemedicine platforms, they may not receive essential information about the associated risks, and they certainly will not have access to a practitioner who is able to monitor them along the way. The rise of telemedicine due to the COVID-19 pandemic has paved the way for numerous online prescribers to dispense inexpensive ketamine lozenges, tablets, and nasal sprays following a simple and short video interview. The FDA says that some companies provide up to 30 doses of ketamine after a single session, which can lead to misuse. There is caution when dealing with emerging therapies like ketamine. It is important that we don't immediately rush in to these more advanced treatments which don't have as much data behind them. We also know that there is variability among different compounding pharmacies on how stringent they are with not only their cleanliness practices, but also ensuring that the yield of the medication is correct in the final compounded product. We need to get out there and teach people that there is a difference between going online and purchasing ketamine or going to clinics which have rigorous protocols that ensure our patients are safe and overseen by the correct practitioners. We need to ensure that the goal is that patients are taken care of and not given access to a medication which could potentially be dangerous. There is also a drug that the FDA has approved called S. Ketamine. This is an FDA approved ketamine nasal spray, which can be used for treatment resistant depression. It's important to note that the FDA warning does not extend to this 
product. It is simply the use of ketamine for psychiatric purposes that is currently unregulated. However, we in this country allow off-label use of every medication at any prescriber's discretion. Therefore, ketamine is getting used all of the time for many different disease states. Keep yourself safe and be sure that if you're going to use this therapy, that you have access to the right people who will ensure that you get the maximum benefit out of the medication while minimizing the risks. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Lindsay Elmore and I am a pharmacist who makes science simple. If you liked this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, give it a like and share it with a friend. Also, go check out all the other videos that I have on my page and drop a comment when you find your favorite. I'm wondering, have any of you ever done ketamine therapy? Tell us about it.